Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Road to Greatness podcast with your hosts, Calvin, Lonnie, and Reed. And we have a special guest on today, uh, Aaron. Uh, What's up? Say wave hi to the cameras and all that. <laughs> which uh, which one am I looking at? Uh, that one's yours. That yeah. one's mine. Yeah. Okay. What's up? <laughs> um, you click record on that, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, so, What's yeah, up? we have uh, Rhode Island's finest bodybuilder here on our podcast oh, today. Bold <laughs> statement there. <laughs> Rhode Island's a small state, so there's not many. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we kind of wanted to have you on to just talk about you and how you got here because we know you from oh, i got to rhode island yeah like but. everything along the way because you we know you from you know a year ago now but before that you don't know where you came from right. you disappeared out of nowhere right um so why don't you talk to us first like how you got into uh like working out i guess that's everyone's like oh well story. um i've been an athlete pretty much my entire life ever since i was a little kid i was one of those kids that uh throw me a ball and i could play the sport Um, and, uh, so yeah, so I kind of started to kind of center myself in one direction around uh, high school, I guess, uh, with more towards soccer than, um, football and baseball. I was a catcher in baseball, uh, played tight end in football, um, outside linebacker, uh, but, um, soccer was kind of like the thing that, uh, it was like. Yeah, like yeah, I just uh, couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. It was like, and I think it was because, like, I grew up, so I'm from Texas. I'm not from Rhode Island. Right. So. <laughs> <It's> that <laughs> That's where you that. said, like, yeah. how'd you get to Rhode Island? Yep. So I grew up, uh, after my parents got divorced, I grew up out in the country on, like, a little small farm. Um, and uh, after my parents got divorced, my mom moved into the city. So I went from wearing Wranglers and and <laughs> cowboy boots to school to, like, all of a sudden, I stuck out like a fucking sore thumb. Um <laughs> Uh, so, uh, that was a culture shock, but, uh, we moved into predominantly Latin or Hispanic neighborhood. So like I was literally a minority in my neighborhood. Right. I was one of like maybe three white kids in this whole Jeez. little community. Um, so we all, and then all of us, we all were within the same grades. All of my friends, like, uh, there was like 13 of us that were like one or two grades apart from each other. So we all grew up, whatever season it was, was what sport we were playing outside, you know? And uh, being in a Hispanic neighborhood, soccer was something that we played. I was going to ask, is that like, was that the predominant sport in that Yeah, area? so in high, that's like when in high school, because like the guys I was growing up with, they were the ones that were playing like club soccer and plus they were playing school soccer and stuff like that. So they kind of like lured me into club tryouts and stuff because like, it was like everything I did from right. that point before was like recreational, you know competitive but recreational based you know like city leagues and stuff and uh so i graduated high i played hot soccer all through high school uh won a state championship uh my senior year with my high school um went on and played two years of uh, uh naia um well so i was recruit i was actually heavily recruited as a goalkeeper uh coming out of high school notre dame was sending me letters yeah. uh, really uh, Florida International was sending wow. me letters. Uh, Louisiana Tech was sending me yeah. letters. Um, uh, Stephen F. Austin was a school that I ended up initially signing with because they gave me full full ride. S- full ride. Yeah. yeah. All the other school, like mm-hmm. Notre Dame, was like like I, I, I that that was my first choice. That's the, the, the school I grew up watching as a kid. Yeah. Notre Dame football, and uh, I. Uh, I couldn't get in that on the academic <laughs> requirements. <laughs> it's like you got to be damn near genius to get into yep. that school, you know. Uh, so uh, out of the other offers that I had, Stephen F. Austin State University, which is in southeast Texas, in Nacogdoches, Texas, they gave me a full ride. But uh, I quickly got booted out of that school for <laughs> academic probation. Uh, I was not a student. I was an athlete. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't uh, – I wasn't a marquee athlete that they, you know, fixed right. your grades for yeah. you. <laughs> what, what do you need, like a 3.0 or 3.2? To, to stay, get into like, Notre Dame was a 3.8 oh, transfer Jesus. in and on I a 4.0 you have to stay scale. Within that range. In yeah, uh, I graduated sport. high school. So, <laughs> so I graduated high school with like a 2.9, <laughs> and uh, but I went uh, even though I graduated, I went and did summer school and redid yep. a couple classes to bring my. GPA up yeah. going into college, and I think I had a transfer in at a three point four. Oh, that's not bad. And uh, all for Stephen F. Austin, you need a three point two as oh, an athlete. Okay. 
uh, which, <laughs> which doesn't say much for yeah. the school, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but um, but yeah, I lasted half. Uh, I lasted literally a little over a semester. Oh there. no way! Oh and, my god! Yeah, they they the first thing that I didn't they took the academic scholarship away. Mm-hmm. So at that point, then I was having to call dad to figure oh. out how I was going to pay for the. I didn't the, know they did that. I yeah, didn't know they took it away. Yeah, you like, got to require yeah. a certain level, you know. And wow. my biggest thing is I didn't go to class. I was always one of those kids <laughs> that uh, could just pass the test. Yeah. Right. You know? College and, is a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, they don't care if you're in class or not. Yep. So they, <laughs> you know, yeah. like you're not forced to go. In high school, they'll, they'll like, they'll say, you know, you got to come to class, this, yeah, that. They'll like, they'll you. make you go there. Um, in college, it's like, God, oh, it's your choice. Yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah, to yeah. go. The you're paying for it no matter what. paid either yeah. way, you know. Yeah. So, uh, They're like, so, yeah, so I went name. to Richland College, which uh, 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 was a small kind of borderline in between JUCO and NAIA and uh, uh, played there. Uh, we won two national championships the two years I was there. Um, the first year I was there, I didn't play much. The second year, I split time with the other guy that was in goal. Um, uh, his name was also Aaron. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, then so after that. was pretty much your main focus, like, throughout? Sports, like, yeah, for a long time, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like the the goalie position in soccer, like yeah. Once so you got to after college, college is when I and it was like because of my catching background, yeah. And a lot of the movements you do as a baseball catcher is real similar to kind of the movements are just on a bigger scale than when you get in uh, in a soccer goal, right? You know, and uh, it's like the lateral movements and squ- staying square and cutting the angles and and everything like that. So uh, so after college is when I started progressing to playing on the field a little bit more because I was always I was always good enough to get on the team Mm -hmm. but that was about it right you know (laughs) I spent a lot of time doing this (laughs) you know and I I like I played semi-professional for a while so I started trying to do whatever I could do I was like I wanted to play so I told the coach somebody's hurt or this position let me try it you know and and eventually I became like a uh a like a defensive back uh or a defensive central midfield player because I wasn't I wasn't fast but I had an endurance like through the roof so I could go for hours without getting Mm -hmm. tired interesting and uh and then I broke my ankle uh playing and I had to have two screw or four screws and two plates put in it and that kind of like summed up that deal yeah and uh, that's when I ventured in towards the coaching aspect yep. of things and I uh, went back to school um, and started working on like my path from there, you yeah. know, and uh, uh, I don't have an actual degree, but um, I've I got ask, all did you the end up graduating or did you leave before? No, I never graduated yeah. college. Um, I ended up leaving and cause again, like I just did the school thing wasn't for me. I was ready <laughs> to get in and get my hands dirty, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was always kind of an entrepreneurial spirit, yep. you know, so, uh, um, so yeah, so I started doing certification courses and advanced certification courses and stuff that I could get done in six weeks yeah. or 16 weeks at the tops. One of my, one of my certifications took 16 weeks to do. What was that? Um, that was, uh, advanced biomechanics. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, um, so, uh, and then I started really learning how the body moved mm-hmm. mechanically and stuff. And I came into like the coaching aspect. I had some friends that I played ball with that were in, into youth coaching. And like yeah. down in Texas, select sports are big money business, you know, because uh, lots of money down there. Um, it's warm year round pretty much. So you can play everything. All There's no sure, like, yeah. like up here, you know, like it's it sh- no shuts down like right now. You yeah. Know? So, um, uh, so. Uh, they were coaching and stuff, and they would bring me. They were they were asking me to come help them with practices and stuff like that, knowing what I was doing and like, you know, trying to figure out why this kid is struggling with this. And I started really studying how athletes move. Mm-hmm. And uh, my first like coaching job is I was kind of like the conditioning and strength and and cool. fitness coach yeah. for uh, some youth some youth uh, sport programs. And um, they would bring me in and I would do everything as watch how they step and turn and figure out, uh, excuse me, figure out where their, their breakdown is, you know, like uh, why, you know, what can we do? What can they do differently mechanically that would speed them up? Right. And uh, I got a job working with uh, the Michael Johnson performance center 
um, where which was like um, um, kind of like that place you were telling me about EPS. Oh yeah, that's yep. here where you t- you're a sports specific athlete. Yeah, Lonnie went there. Was... Yeah, you're a sports specific athlete. You go like I'm a football player. You go okay, they're going to sign you this coach. He create he works with you for a little bit yeah. to kind of pick apart what the good points and bad points you have and then develops a program I to see. improve on both. So that's the job that you had. That's what okay. kind of what got me into and then that's when I started doing. So that required me when I got hired to do that, that required me to have to get a personal training license. Okay. Yeah. So that's when I got my first personal training license. Oh, so the person the license came after all those other certs that you got. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. 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 So like I like honestly the guy that ran the the center that and the, like they called it the Michael Johnson Center because it was affiliated through Nike and and whatever and it was a Attached to this, there's a guy in Texas. His name's Dr. Craig, and he had this whole like area of north of Dallas that he owned, and he built like a wellness center, a state of the art fitness wow. center, a baseball complex, yeah. a soccer complex, and Jeez. stuff like that. And uh, he was a sports medicine doctor. Yeah, and uh, I think he did something else too, plastic surgery or something, mm. a re a reconstructive surgery. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so. The guy that ran it worked, did work at one of the soccer clubs I was kind of satelliting mm-hmm. with and saw potential, I guess, in me and like approached me about working there and helped me pick the courses and stuff like that. And um, uh, so, yeah, that you if you were a soccer player, a volleyball player, basketball player, any of the yeah. sports that had s- the similar movement to what my base or my you kind of background sport is, that. I could branch off of because training mechanical training for those are pretty much the same yeah. you know wow. and uh, uh i got to work with some really cool technology we'd had these cameras that we would video you doing a move yeah and then it would put next to it like this um uh this mechan- uh like mechanical breakdown so there would be like red and green oh to show where, you the, the proper movement yeah like where your that. shin should be yeah, when wow. you're doing that, this particular thing and how many and degrees stuff. off yeah. you yeah. are from it so you can show the athlete wow. and then try to train them to really position cool. themselves and that's uh, like that you know we, i learned really all you can't you can't make someone faster right. you can't teach speed uh, and that's you something you're born technique. with, but you can teach somebody how to be quicker, Jeez. you know, um, and more efficient. Yeah. And, uh, and then from there, uh, went in started, um, I fell in love with that. I started working more directly with soccer clubs. I got into hired by a soccer club. It was called Texas football club. And, uh, eventually it became, um, well, eventually it kind of broke up and the club split and went two different dire- to one side of the group went one way and the other the girls side of the club went the other way and i always had a knack for some reason of working with girls mm-hmm. versus boys boys were i always used to say give me the girls monday through friday give me the boys on saturday and sunday yep. because the girls will do exactly what you tell them yeah. exactly how you tell them they'll try and try and try to get it that way yeah you know, uh, where like boys in practice is like fucking herding cats, you know? (laughs) And, uh, uh, but then on the weekend, you know, when it's game day, the girls won't deviate, you know, from what you taught them to do, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, well, you know, like for example, players receiving a ball and she's trying to take it on the back foot to turn, to go forward. And she keeps turning into pressure. It's like, well, you taught me to turn that way. Every time I receive the ball that way, it's like, well, yeah, but there's a fucking player right there. Now you got to use your brain where boys, the creativity starts to stand out in a game environment, you know, but when you try to put them in a structured environment, they fight back, Yeah, you know? So, uh, so I went with the girls side of the club when it split and I worked for a soccer club called Sting Soccer Club. And I mean, you guys may not know it, but they're probably the largest and oldest all girls oh. elite program. We, while I was there, we put four, I think four girls through that program from the age of 12 to 17 into the national wow. pool. Um, one of them actually played in the world cup really? uh, with oh, the women's geez. national team. Um, uh, so, and then from, uh, I got burnt out because then when you get to coaching at that level, like if you're coaching at college, there are many professionals. Yeah. So how long were you, were you doing that, uh, that whole job? Shit, from, 15 like, years, oh, man. Wow. 50, I'm 44. Yeah. So yeah, 15 years. I started wow. coaching when I was in my early twenties, like 20, Jeez. 21. So what did, when you were going through all that, were you not really into like the bodybuilding scene no, yet? Okay, so not at not all. Not at all touching. It was not all at all. Sports. The lifting that I did was all geared towards. Oh, wow being an athlete you know so you didn't Uh, start until later Uh, yeah so i got into bodybuilding so i like i got married 
gained a bunch of weight like everybody <laughs> does. I was a fat ass for a while. Uh, what's funny is I weigh almost as much as I did when I first got into losing weight. Yeah. Uh, 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 now that's hilarious. Um, that- but yeah, I had a kid and uh, he got divorced. Mm-hmm. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> living the American dream. <laughs> uh, so when I got divorced at that time, when I got divorced, I was on a weight loss path because when my kid was two, one, two years old, like, I, like picking him up, carrying him around the house, I'd get winded, you know. And I was like, I gotta do something about yeah. my health. And then plus I was like, I'm working with these kids and I'm, you want to be a positive influence. Well, yeah, I'm telling like, them do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> right. you know, like who's going to take that serious. So the young kid will take you serious. Got a yeah. fear for a certain number of right. times because of authoritarian, you know, ism over them. But then when they get to a certain age, they don't take you serious anymore. Cause yeah. like you don't even do it yourself, you know, kind of thing. So, uh, so I started racing mountain bikes, uh, road, bikes like cycling um uh i got into doing triathlons i decided i was gonna do the first like real event i i did was a iron man oh my god and uh (laughs) yeah one of my friends was like dude you're nuts you did the biggest one you could do straight out the gate (laughs) which was an experience and a half i mean you talk about a coming to jesus with yourself uh and i did it in houston texas in the middle of july (laughs) Uh, so just imagine 108 degrees core temperature outside with 90% humidity. Um, and I'm doing, uh, two and a half mile swim, 120 mile bike ride and, uh, a full marathon right after it back to back to back. Yeah. I just looked up what it consists of an Ironman because I've heard of them, but I never know what the breakup of them. That's insane. Yeah. That's like, (laughs) yeah. And the training's even more insane. It's six hour commitment every day. Uh, I would wake up in the morning, go to the gym, swim for an hour and then run for 30 minutes, go to work, then leave work, go home, get on the bike and go ride for four hours. Those are like six, seven thousand decades. 7,000 calorie day. Oh, like dude, there. yeah, I, the like, amount of food, I could eat whatever yeah. the hell I wanted yeah, then. But so what led into the bodybuilding thing is after, so I went from being 265 pounds of probably, I was I was obese yeah. as far as body fat percentage goes, uh, to being 172 pounds oh my God. in about a year. Jeez. And I was really, all of a sudden, I'm really competitive again. Yeah. Again, the whole throw me the ball and I can right. play the sport aspect. And I was, I, I, and what drove me out of doing the mountain bike racing and stuff like that is because of the fact that I'm, I've got no fear when it comes to doing shit sometimes that I would go balls to the wall into a turn or a jump or something and crash. And I remember there was a race I was racing. I literally crashed 36 seconds into the race because I was trying to take the whole shot into the trees and it fucking missed it and launched and went down this ravine head first, separated my shoulder, broke my collarbone and everything like that. My wife, I was still married at the time to my ex-wife. She's there waiting for me to take a picture when I come around on the actual single track. And then they hear Mrs. Garrett, can you please report to the medical tent? You know, <laughs> <laughs> not even a minute into the race. <laughs> like, Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Uh, my, my team at the time nicknamed me lawn dart. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, so I got divorced and, uh, uh, Training was just, again, it was, you know, five to six hour commitment every single day. So I was having to put my kid in daycare to be able to go complete my training for the day. And it was cost playing child support (laughs) and all that other is costing me an arm and a leg. So I had a buddy, I worked at Lifetime Fitness at the time. I was a group fitness and personal trainer at, at group fitness instructor and personal trainer at Lifetime Fitness. And one of my other buddies that I was there and me and him weren't really friends at first. We were kind of competitive with each other. Um, and we became friends after getting to know each other a little bit better. We're really good friends now. Uh, he, uh, he was into bodybuilding. Mm. And, uh, so he, I was, I was like, I need to, you know, switch directions. So yeah. I started kind of, you know, just popping around him and stuff like that and, and whatnot. And then, uh, so I got into bodybuilding after that. I didn't get competitive with it until after I met my business partner that I worked yeah. at the gym with. Um, and I met him through Facebook on down the road. We were at separate gyms, but, uh, basically kind of promoting the same thing and we became friends and shared information back and forth and we inevitably went on to open that gym yeah i was gonna ask you like so 
how long through your like once you start lifting weights and like getting into bodybuilding, did you eventually open up that gym with your? Oh, it's about two years. Oh wow, so oh. pretty quick. It's about <laughs> two years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he came, he approached me. Um, he had an investor that was uh, that was going to invest in him to open the gym, and he had another business. What was funny is he, he had another business par- business partner in it as well that had money that was going to help open the gym. And when we all, he's like, I want to bring you in to help me launch personal training you know we'll give you a little equity you know you help run the gym as a right. manager and stuff like that and and whatnot and the guy that was one of his his angel investors i graduated high school with oh. and uh we we weren't friends in high school yeah, but we but recognized each, each other, other. Yeah. yeah and then we became really close friends and he was my workout buddy for a while he's the big guy that i showed you the picture of oh zach my, that's him yeah oh my god yeah we went to high school together and he was a bean pole when we were in high yeah. school um so he started it probably pretty soon after yeah, high school. Yeah, he started but, lifting in high school. Yeah. Uh, uh, and he was massive. He's uh, yeah. He yeah, he's 26 huge. inch arm, yeah. you know. Insane. Uh, his, his forearm was bigger than my bicep. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so, um, so I got into bodybuilding after the divorce because of the time consumption thing, and I fell in love with it from there. And then when I met my business partner in Texas that we opened empire fitness and, uh, it was, it was his gym, but it was still kind of mine in a sense is that right. I was helping and, and whatnot. And, uh, he, uh, uh, he, he was an IFBB pro. He had just gone pro, Jeez. um, not long before that. And, um, uh, he, it was kept kind of like I did you, yeah. you know, like just kept throwing the bug in the ear every yep. once in a while. Yeah. When we first and, met, like I, I, I asked you to spot me on bench and like, yeah. and then like, you're like, Oh, you want to come hit a workout? But then since then, like, you're like, Oh, do you want to like, it was constantly like you and Joey were talking about doing like the bodybuilding. Yeah. Yeah. I was and trying then, to get Joey I to know, do a show. And I don't know why he still has to do one. Cause yeah, he should insane. do one. He could. <laughs> um, but then like, as it went on, like, you're like, Oh, do you want to do it? And that's how we got to doing mine. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, geez. So that so he he was so he would just you? I was training at the gym. So yeah. and me and him were the only trainers in okay. the gym. So it was me and him hanging out all day long. If we didn't have a client, we were running the office at the gym or cleaning or or whatever. I was li- <laughs> this is what's funny too is where he opened the gym was literally across the street from where I had just got a house. Oh my god. So I lived on this corner lot and there was this main road and on the other side of it was like a little strip. There was like a painting yeah. store. I don't know, it was like a tile shop or something like that that was in the, and they went out of business. So that's where he got his spot to yeah. put his gym. So I li- I would literally walk out of my backyard and just go fence and walk across the street to go to work. Oh, that's that's sweet. And uh um which worked out perfect because I was at the gym all day long, yeah. open to close. Um he would leave periodically because he had another business he kind of ran on the side too which is now his primary business that we yeah cut ties with the gym uh um and uh um but yeah he would just keep dropping the you should do a show you know kind of you should do a show oh you're you're getting big you know or starting to show progress you should do a show so uh it's just kind of what i did to you (laughs) it's kind of an old trick yeah (laughs) but uh but so yeah so i decided at 2000 15, I think it was. Mm. I have to go back and look when my first show was. It was yeah. 2015, 2014. I can't remember. But uh, I decided to do a show. I, did a, I didn't do an NPC show the first mm. one. I did a, what was called a GBO show, which is Global Bodybuilding, which is a <clears throat> basically the same thing as the NPC, but yeah. just a smaller okay, a small smaller organization. Yeah. You know, they're trying to get into the – they're trying to be competitive right. with the MPC and the IFBB. They have their own G, GBO pros and oh, wow. everything and, yeah. and whatnot. There's just not a ton, yeah. especially up here. Most of the shows that they have are all like, in the south. Like I never heard of them. That was- yeah. Um, but uh, so I did a – it was in Oklahoma. I did that show. And uh, after that, I was like, I want to do the next one. Yeah. And that's when Classic Physique was first getting introduced right. to the league. It was first coming out. So I, the next show I did was, again, I went big or went home. You know, yeah. I did the Dallas Europa, which is the, if you look up the Dallas Europa uh, Expo, um, NPC, uh, NPC Dallas Europa, um, it's a massive, it, it's a massive show. It's a three day event. It's got a, a fitness expo. Like, Europa, yes, I was going to say start to the It's day. got <laughs> booths, you know, all these vendors, like 5%. Dimatize uh, every vendor you can think of comes and puts up these big crazy oh, yeah. booths and 
Bang is there. Bang usually has a bunch of chicks doing booty dances all over the place. You know, the uh, guy that owns Bang. Is oh, he's a psycho. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a good in a good way. I but. know, but, but you exactly see, like, what you would picture. I've met yeah. him like twice. Oh, have you yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, at at, at he the seems Dallas like he's, Europa. Yeah, like. Oh my God! It's just, you see the ads with him in it, and I'm like, "Yeah, this and is he's the like guy 50. that owns it." Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> he's like 50 years like, old. Where did this guy like come from? He came out of nowhere too. Like, it feel like Bang came out just like yeah. and just dominated the whole you know, market. Out the of nowhere. supplement industry is funny, man, because um, sometimes you just have to have the right concept and be at the right time, right? You know, and uh, that Redline is the name of the the company that does Bang. I think it's okay. Redline. Uh, I got a can right here. Do they do other products besides Yeah, bang? so they have four or five. Like, they have a pre-workout. It's actually called Redline. Oh, really? And it comes in a little bitty, like, eight-ounce bottle, and you're only supposed to drink half of it. Oh, it's ready to it. go. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's already pre-mixed. Yep. It's not carbonated. Yeah. Um, and you're only supposed to drink half of it because <laughs> it's that strong. Jesus. And um, uh, so, they bang, they – I don't know what inspired them to come out with that, but yeah. they just did that whole – crazy colors and yeah. really linked up with the South American and the influencer marketing. Like, yeah. They got really big with that. And like all the girls on like, yeah, yeah, Instagram yeah. yeah. They like, pulled in all like, the, the cringy South like, American yeah. pros and <laughs> stuff like that. So Argentinian and Brazilian girls yeah. and, and whatnot. It's and that's, working. So oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Guys making loot. So, yeah. but yeah, so I did the, I did classic physique and I finished like fourth place. Oh, I think it was fourth place, fifth place. Um, the first, the second show, but the first NPC show I did. Yeah. And then I've continued from there. Um, How many shows qualif- have you done now? Like <sighs> Since then? Uh, at least 10. Oh, wow. Jeez. Maybe. I don't know. I have to go yeah. back again and like, look, I like, I'm so, once I get done with something, yep. I move on to the I, That's next. what I was going to ask. So like. At the show, everyone was asking you, are you going to do another show? Or yeah. Another show? Like every I still get person. asked. My wife is like yeah. in my ear about it. Um, <laughs> But I assume like it's been a while since you did your last show. So like, are you ready to, like, to move on or like? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 2018. Yeah, I did. So get this. I did. It was 2014 when I started because it was four years of competing, and I did 10 shows inside yeah. of four wow. years. The last year I competed, or the last 18 months that I competed, I did five shows in a stretch of Jeez. 18 months, <laughs> and uh, that that that's when I was like, I'm done for yeah. a little while. Yeah. Um. Because at that point, like you're cutting muscle off yeah. your body. To I was keep gonna say, there's no time for you to. Go back and bulk up for six months or eight months, and then it's, do it again. Yeah, but like, like you can only really do so much. Yeah, you know. And then if like you really want a hard bulk, you can put on body fat, you know. And then you gotta cut the body fat off again, yep. which makes the process that much harder. And then making the process that much harder, you risk sacrificing yeah. muscle loss, you know. So, Jeez. um, so th- I mean, most of the pro, okay. So the pros, like, like let's say a guy like Logan Franklin or or um. Uh, what's another one? Dami, uh, D- uh, Dami Urinovic or whatever his name oh, is, yeah. uh, or Danny Marinovic or Urinovic. Uh, he's on Instagram. Um, uh, the, the, those guys that they're at a point where they've already like, they, they just keep themselves in a certain condition so that like their preps take a couple of weeks, yep. you know, to just kind of tighten the body up again, you know, when they're going to go into like Logan, disappeared yeah. from bodybuilding from because he was men's physique yeah he disappeared for two years and, came and then came back as what he is now and yeah. if you look at pictures of him when he was men's physique he was tiny compared yeah. to what he is now Jeez, so like if to really make some progress you gotta step away from competing because it's impossible to grow while you're cutting you know and everybody can say oh uh, you know all the guys that you know you can stay lean and and build muscle is like yeah it's, it's like, a hard process and the only way you do it that fast is with really good drugs <laughs> <laughs> let's just be honest <laughs> oh geez yeah he's he was much smaller are you looking at logan yeah yeah um and see logan's a dallas native too so it's like a guy i watched his career that yeah. was another so that was a good thing too so when i got into the bodybuilding side being with my my business his name was kobe lewis yep. um you can look him up too if you want um uh, he, uh, he's friends with all these guys. So we would travel, me and him would take off and go to, you know, destination Dallas or Metroflex Arlington or, yeah. or, or whatever. And we'd go, we'd pop into the gym and Jason Poston's right there lifting or Branch Warren's right over here lifting or Steve Kuklo, Dang. who became a really, I, I became a, a good friend with, yeah. you know, like I sh- told you last time I was in Dallas, I went and jumped in a workout yeah. with him. He, he was, uh, he was the one doing like the lunges with like 120 pounds or yeah. whatever it was. hundred pounds. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I was doing it with 60s yeah. and almost falling over. 
Uh, and he's got calves he's the side huge. of my head. Yeah, he's giant. <laughs> oh but uh, he was just at the Olympia. I think he finished fifth at the Olympia. Oh, really? Yeah, fifth wow. or sixth or something like that. Um, but yeah, so uh, like it's hard not to to you know go down that path when you're around that many people yep. at that level. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's... and uh, you learn things from them. You yeah. know, um, there was a guy that I actually worked a little bit at a little gym and. North Dallas, this real richy area of North Dallas uh, called uh, West Plano. And uh, there was a gym there that was called Willow Bend Fitness. And it was like this upscale, like, like fitness expensive club. kind of exclusive type of place. Like t- Tony Romo was a member there. You mm-hmm. know, uh, um, there was a guy that worked out of there. His name was Jeff Dwelly. And he was like one of the premier bodybuilding coach prep coaches in oh, Dallas wow. and posing coaches in yeah. Dallas. So it was like hanging out around him and watching him do his training sessions and stuff like that. And just kind of we're in my industry, we're all thieves. Yeah. You know, so so, his tricks and yeah, all yeah. You see and, somebody yeah. do something that's cool. You go do yeah. it yourself, <laughs> you know? Um, and then you take credit for it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It happens all the time. And it's like, I, it's like young guys getting into training too. They get pissed when they see somebody do something that they came yeah. up with or whatever. And it's like, dude, yeah. imitation is the highest form of flattery. You know, <laughs> relax. Yeah, if you see some you can't big stop guy, them from doing it. Yeah, if you see some big guy stealing your thing that you came up with, it's like a little guy. You're like, oh man, that should be yeah. a compliment. Like yeah. it's like awesome. You never get the credit for it, but like it's yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. got off track there. Uh, but yeah, so um, uh, so we we I, I started competing. Um, uh, I, I've never finished first place. Oh, really? And so again, just like oh in my God. <laughs> soccer, I was good enough to get there, but not good enough to win. You know? yep. um, I think the best I've finished was was third. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm sorry, second. My, the last two shows I did here in 2018, I finished second in both shows. Oh, my God. Uh, um, and like I sh- like a, f- crowd feedback from people that even t- I didn't know, but knew yeah. people that, were f- some, was, that knew the friends I had at the show were all like, you should have taken first place uh but it is what it is you know there's politics involved in all kinds of stuff and i'm not gonna be one to cry and complain about it you know you just move on um uh but um so yeah uh so i decided i was gonna take a break and um i met my wife through i was actually her coach before i was was dating her (laughs) we met on facebook um and just started talking she was she was pursuing the idea of doing it. And this is how I got into prep. I had an, I had other clients that I had taken to shows. I had taken one girl that I worked with to nationals, um, in uh, Miami, uh, one year. And she was, you know, uh, a, a solid competitor too. Um, uh, and I had some other ones. Um, but my wife was the one that like stood out when I first met her because, uh, she just is like, one, she's a Northeastern girl. Like, you guys are around them, so you know. Yep. To a Texan, though, it's like a completely different world because yeah. they're the most rock-headed, stubborn people you've met in your life. <laughs> it's very true. Uh, uh, and, they, like, like they will fight you in a heartbeat. Yeah. Like, she'll throw punches before she throws tears. Um, uh, and, and, uh, and an Italian on top of that. Um, but uh, she just had so much drive, and the person that she was working with wasn't really giving her – like legitimate guidance, yep. just kind of, it was almost like throwing a cookie cutter kind of plan at her, Yeah, you know? And, uh, she was asking me a lot of questions cause we were talking, of course, flirting, you know, sliding into <laughs> each other's DMs, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and she was asking me a lot of questions and I was just, you know, trying to answer them as, as helpful as I could yeah. or whatever. And one thing led to another and she was like, I want to do a show. This lady tells me I'm not ready. And I said, well, you're never ready for your first show. If you're going to sit around and wait for perfect conditions, you'll never do it. You know, so so just do it, you know, and then you grow from there. You find out what's wrong, kind of like you do it and then find out like, you you know, have you either have your eyes open or you go knock everyone's socks off. That's the only two outcomes there are. Um, uh, And uh, so she so I started coaching her. She did her first show. She went pro in the WBFF, her second show. Wow. Holy crap. And uh, and she was, t- I mean, if you look at her old photos, yeah. uh, she was tiny. I think she just posted she, on no, her I, Instagram. I saw her. She just posted one. So the glute transformation. So yep. the the one on the left in the red. Yeah. That was her very first check in photo with me. No way. That's what she oh looked like then. And so that's been a four year process God, for her. That's insane. Yeah. Um. And she's got insane genetics. She yeah. responds like that God. to things. 
So yeah, she, uh, she's an animal in the gym. Yeah, like she is. <laughs> she's also, she's pain in the ass to train yeah, too. Yeah, I but. bet. Um, yeah, but she, I can tell, like she probably puts her clients through work. Yeah, like, yeah, at, she at does. There. Well, she, she, like, so she had me and like so, and Kobe, my business partner, trained his clients the same way. Like we just, you know, yeah. push you as hard as we freaking can, you know, <laughs> and. Uh, um, and it was funny is when you first get into, especially when you do like uh, NASM, mm. um, uh, when you first get into training, uh, some of these programs, they tell you, you know, be gentle with your clients yeah. in the beginning, win them over yeah. with your personality. And it was like, it's like, no, like, I'm yeah. not, like, well, it works for my elderly time. people, like people that are not, that have just started getting into the gym that works well with, cause like if they're come back the source they possibly can have never worked out before, they're like, I don't like this, typically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you definitely got to read but the client. But for people but, that have been to the gym before and are looking for a trainer like you, then I think that's absolutely the yeah, way to go. Yeah, yeah. So, and we try to gear ourselves to it. What, what we found out, though, was like the average people that you were you would initially think that wouldn't yeah. come back, they come back. Oh, really? And, they, and they, like, they'll pay for weeks in advance yeah. because they're like, wow. Like, yeah. And uh, it's usually the ones that are like, they, they think they train hard and then they do a training session with you and they're yeah. like, uh, yeah, I don't well, train hard. Lonnie and I being on the receiving end of your training, <laughs> you can definitely attest for that because like when we first started working out for each other during those like months, like my, my chest and my legs were just so goddamn sore. Like there was a week where like the first time we hit chest, it was like that whole week. I was like, I can't hit it again, <laughs> like, which was good because the way that you structured your training was like the chest, back, legs, like, and then you would hit it the next week again. So you have a whole week to like yeah, cover from yeah, that. Seven so like, days of recovery. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And which is like, and that's what you do during a maintenance period. Yeah. You know, uh, when you're training for, when you're cutting for a show, then you, you your training in, increases and, and stuff like that. Your frequency increases yeah. and, and whatnot. And, um, but yeah, so, uh, so she, you know, she, she went pro and then she's, uh, she's now switching over and she's trying to compete in the NPC. She's got aspirations of trying to compete uh, for an IFBB pro card, but she again, as well as, uh, you know, she's 40 now. So yep. we're getting to that age where we're starting to become <laughs> leaders more than competitors. Yep. <laughs> uh, cause it's harder, it's harder on my body to recover now than it is yeah. on yours. You know, right. um, uh, it doesn't matter how many drugs I take. It right. still takes time, you know, <laughs> and I'll be honest. I do take a little drugs here and there, uh, for, for what I do. Uh, most of it's doctor prescribed. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you have to, you know, for, well, for uh, what you did, like, that's like, that's, yeah, I, uh, actually I was going to show you, go, go to, um, go to my Instagram page and scroll down a little ways. And there was a post, uh, where it shows me in 28 or 2015, I think to 2016. It's, uh, let's see. It's down, it'll show you the difference of when I was finishing up as a triathlete and starting out as a bodybuilder and the transformation from one to Is it pretty far the, down? Yeah, hold on. I'll find it for you and I'll show it to you. Uh, for, and then I'll show read this picture. This was him. Yeah, here oh, it is. Wow. Right there. So 2013 to... Holy crap. Oh, wow. my God. Have we'll, you seen... We'll, have you, we'll, you, we'll get a screenshot wow. of that yeah, and put yeah. it up on the video. Uh Oh, damn. So the one on the right was when I was still racing triathlons. Yeah. I weighed like 171, 172 right Jeez. there. The one on the left is right after I got done doing those last shows, That's 2019, it. April 2019. Oh Actually, 2019 is when that was April 2019. That was right after I did the Fitness Atlantic show here wow. at the Mohegan Sun. Uh, and I was 210 pounds there. Good Lord. Wow. Um, I weigh 248 yeah. now. After well, Thanksgiving, 248. <laughs> it, it, kind of off topic, your wife posted a photo, I think for Thanksgiving, but like your beard is like way shorter. I mean, you look... That genuinely. was when I was growing it back out. I was like, you genuinely look like 20 years younger. With your yeah. beard, like, oh, wait until I shave it oh all off. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> like, like, I don't have the gray. The gray gives yeah. it away right now. <laughs> I was like... When was that picture taken? <laughs> yeah, was... that was that was when we got engaged. That picture is from when we got yeah. we got engaged at the bridge uh, in in Westerly. And, oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that was on the patio at the bridge. That was yeah. 20, 2019. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah so what made you move up here? So, <laughs> so we started dating. So from the coaching thing, we just we we were talking so much. Um, and, uh, we had so much in common, kids, divorce, fitness, 
blah, 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 that we just kind of, she decided she was going to come to Texas to meet me. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And she was actually coming to Texas anyways because she was part of Advocare then. And they were having some big oh, like X- success event or whatever. You know how those MLM yeah. programs work. And um, uh, so she was coming to Dallas. And I was like, well, while you're here in Dallas, you know, let me take you out to dinner, you know, or, or whatever. You know, being suave. Yeah. Like I was. <laughs> uh, she ended up spending the whole trip with me. She never oh my left God. my house. She didn't oh. even go to the event. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. So I came to visit her. She came to visit me. I came to visit her. Yep. We broke up for a little while. Because um, the long distance thing's hard. Yeah. We got back together. And... Uh, it just came into that where's this going kind of thing yep. and um uh cuz we're both we're you know single with kids right you know um we're not like and we're you know at that time i was 30 Seven thirty-eight, I guess it was four almost 5 years ago so yeah so 39 38 right. 39 and she was she's she's 4 years younger than me so she's in her mid 30s so it's like we're not playing you know yeah. we're not playing the field anymore <laughs> You know, um, I was trying to hang up my boots. <laughs> so, uh, uh, she's got three from her previous marriage. I have one. Yep. Um, she, uh, she had her oldest, which you've met. He's worked out with this yep. Billy. Oh, Hey, there's my, my voice just popped into the, oh, you just the started hearing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe the connection's bad. Uh, but anyways, uh, so, um, so he was, uh, going to be a senior or junior in high school and, yep. uh, didn't want to move him from his high school and his friends and everything yeah. like that. And, uh, reloading, reload and her relationship at that time with her ex-husband was like non-existent yeah, right. as far as cooperation went. Um, so, uh. It was easier for me to work out a deal or foster a deal with my ex and move up here than right. it was for her to move down there. Theoretically, we would both prefer to move down there because the cost of living is like it's way lower, way way yeah. lower. Like three hundred thousand dollar home up yeah. here gets you a shack. Yeah. Three hundred thousand dollar home in Texas gets you a mansion. Yeah. yeah, I lived in Florida for a year last year, and it was the prices yeah. you see. Yeah, 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 gas is a dollar and a half cheaper. Even now, it's dollar and a half cheaper. God. You yeah, know, it's, so. it's crazy actually how much of a difference there is in the, the cost of living overall. Yeah, well, and states. you you've got less regulations. The state yeah. doesn't have taxes and stuff <laughs> like that. So you know they're not trying. Not not everybody's trying to dip their hand in your cookie jar. Yeah, yeah. you think eventually you move back down there, or yeah, I think when we get to a point where the kids are, I mean, it may not be until her little ones graduate. Yep. She wants, she hates the cold. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like all New Englanders, I guess. You guys yeah. hate the cold. You hate the snow, yet you don't leave. But yeah. uh, It's nice for like the first like week. With, like the snow and then you're like, <laughs> Then when it's I'm been on the ground this. for like yeah. six months. Yeah. You're like, okay, now I'm ready for it to be over. <laughs> And it's gray and yep. solid and Driving gross. somewhere to be able to go snowboarding, like that's nice. Like I don't need to live somewhere where I can snowboard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Drive to the mountains or something. Yeah. They can, they can make fake snow. Yeah. The yeah. Fake snow exists. Uh, Colorado Springs is only an eight hour drive from yeah. Dallas, you know, so, uh, or nine hour drive. Uh, which to Rhode Islanders, that sounds like a lot. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- 20 minutes is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere we go in Texas is 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, so I moved up here, and uh, uh, it was funny. We When I moved up here, we literally had no plan. Yeah. No plan. No, she, she, she was, uh, the place she was living in was too small for all of us to be in. Yep. Um, uh, we lived in an extended stay hotel for a good almost four months oh wow yeah yeah um which when so when the the three days a week that she had her kids the yep. kids are on the fold out couch like <laughs> seven inches from the bed that we're yeah. you know <laughs> in the hotel oh, room God. uh until we found that place over here that we live at now in yeah. westerly and uh we've lived there since you know yeah. so so what made you because you work at lux now um yeah have been did you, did she work there before? Did you guys both kind of no, get No, we there actually, or? so when we, we, when we first, when I first moved up here, we were in the, we were staying up near kind of East Greenwich Warwick area. Cause the kids live in with their dad in East Greenwich. He has like a condo mm-hmm. uh, off of main street and East Greenwich and they go to East Greenwich schools. And, uh, so we joined health tracks Yep. and uh, at that time, like, again, I was coming out of 
running a gym, being a personal trainer. I was ready. I was like, yeah. kind of want to take a break and do yeah. online coaching. Yep. You know, so I had a, a handful of online clients that I was able to make enough money to pay bills with and stuff like that until I figured out what I wanted to do up here. Because yeah. again, I was brand new in a new market, knew nobody. You didn't know up yeah. here. Like, this is I knew absolutely no. I yeah. knew her. Yep. You know, that was it. Yeah. And uh, so we joined Health Tracks and we were there for a little bit. And then when we found the place over here in Westerly, we initially joined Westerly Fitness. Yep. And uh, that was a great <laughs> gym. It's actually, it's it, the layout of the gym is great. Yeah. Uh, and they just, redid it recently with like knocked down the walls and like. Yeah, they've opened it up fluid. and stuff like that. And I mean, it's, it's, get, they got great equipment yeah, and. Definitely. And there everything. is one lat pull down machine there that will. Oh I yeah, got, the arc, the yeah. arc row. It is the, the best thing that I've ever like. Yeah. I wish Lux had it. It's just the best feeling lap pull down I've ever experienced. Yeah, yeah. It's a good, it's in the front right yeah. there. Yeah, uh, black machine. That black machine. Mm -hmm. But um, COVID happened. Of course, every everything COVID fucked up everything for everybody. Yeah. Uh, I had a falling out with uh, uh, with the uh, the owner at the gym and uh, moved over to Lux. Um, and uh. I shoot. We were at Lux. I don't know, maybe a month. Yeah. And um, Melissa, um, just talking to me one day, uh, found, yeah, through talking, to, found out that I was a trainer, and yeah. she said, "Well, I don't have any trainers at this gym." I was going to ask, did they have any before? No, you guys? Th there's no wow. trainers at the gym. And she was like, "Would you be interested in you know doing it?" Yeah. And uh, and I told her, I was like, actually, yeah, I'm at a place where I'm ready to start taking clients again and right. being like the only guy here, what what a <laughs> golden ticket that kind of is, yep. you know, Captive so audience. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, she was like, give me your certifications and yeah. give me your insurance and, uh, That's and awesome. yeah, you're ready to go. We'll set your prices up in the computer and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I gave her my certification. She was like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know what you're doing. <laughs> um, and then Sarah shortly came on afterwards. Uh, she kind of used me to test the waters yep. at the place. And then it's just kind of become our home now yeah. for the last. Actually, Nick was telling me this morning, my client that I've trained this morning, that um, sometime in this next two weeks is his one year oh, wow. anniversary of starting to train with me yeah. there. And he was like my first client there. Wow. So, so, wow, that's interesting because, so you must have, I switched over to Lux right when COVID from happening. the Y, right? Yeah, from yeah. the Y. So you must have been starting right. to train there right when I was like also getting there. Yeah, yeah, oh, wow. yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then you know that's that. You know, and yeah. My wife's you know training too, and yeah, that's and, awesome. Uh, here we are today. I, I'm uh, a Texan yep. in <laughs> Rhode Island. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, geez, that's a nice origin story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah, and then. uh yeah, met met a lot of people. Uh, up yeah, here yeah. From, I've always been somebody you can, you know, th throw me out yeah. amongst the crowd and not I'll very make much friends. introverted. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of you guys up here are. My wife is of, very a introverted. Lot a lot of people yeah. up here are very introverted. I remember it was funny. The first, my first experience with a native Rhode Islander was a woman. Um, we were at. Uh, I think it was a Cumbies. Yeah, or yep. something like that. <laughs> me being a Southern raised. Yep conservative minded you know well-mannered <laughs> southern man uh walking up to the door and i step in front of her to open the door yeah. for her and she's like i don't need you to open the door oh my God. I'm like okay <laughs> sorry you know and then the like literally like right after that uh, lady behind the counter was was like is this everything and i was like yeah. yes ma'am and she was like don't call me ma'am oh my god and i'm like oh, oh you must have okay. got them on a bad mood okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well Not then my wife was like, like explaining that. it to me she's like yeah, yeah women up here don't like you to open the door for yeah. them don't call them ma'am it's an insult and i'm like what why <laughs> yeah. when i was working at eb they hired a bunch contracted a bunch of welders they're from uh i think they're based in north carolina and um one of the guys was coming in and there was a female security guard and i guess he said thanks sweetie or thanks hon or something like yeah, that. yeah yeah sweetie hon and they fired him <laughs> yeah yeah complained. and that's like that that's like if you go down where i'm from like that like we yeah. we talk to each other that way and no one yeah. takes offense to it you know it's just how we are it's yeah. like a a term of endearment almost it's, you know it's funny you say that because my grandfather grew up um 
around here but differently than a lot of people around here have grown up like very extroverted he'll talk to literally anyone yeah and and like so that's how i was raised to talk to people like that so like you said the holding the door open and talking to people and all that that's how i've always like done things but people just don't receive it like that mm. it, it's so so i know what you're talking about like they don't they don't think that way um like how you and i were like we're raised and i'm like this is pretty weird like i don't and it's rare for so somebody like, up here to be raised that well way. it's because my grandfather and uh i mean he's the type of person that will be walking in the supermarkets and he looks over someone and says hey how are you doing today and they're like totally caught yeah. off guard. They're like, yeah. i oh, smile at everybody yeah. all the time you know uh i get dirty looks a lot up oh, here yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh but uh i talk to my kids that way too i yeah. say yes sir no sir yes ma'am no ma'am when i'm speaking to them you know yep. and it's uh it's just it's how we are like like uh if if you were to go to like my family reunion yeah you would come with me to go down south and meet all my aunts <laughs> and uncles and one of my aunts were to be like uh like you know hey calvin would you like some more of this and you yeah. and you answer her yeah she'd yeah. be like yeah excuse me you know and yeah, it's like uh, happened, yes ma'am i was down yeah. when i was down there i was in a diner and the lady asked me i was with a bunch of the southern guys i was working with florida natives and the lady asked i forget what she asked me if i wanted coffee or something with breakfast and i was like yeah and then these like, that was rude yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck you mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> no coffee for you then <laughs> oh jeez it's so it's so weird how the different like how just differently paced it is like my brother just went down to south carolina to check out schools and over here it's like up here it's pretty fast paced everything like you <laughs> like like except relative, for on the like, roadways yeah <laughs> but i mean like if you go to a restaurant or something it's typically pretty fast but south, out, south carolina yeah. it's like they're like oh do you like i'll come up and get your drink ordered and like they're like it was 15 minutes then they came back up they're like oh you guys need some more time and my brother's like, no well, like, we're ready to go <laughs> like, yeah what the hell it was just a different uh, structure of life. Nothing we move slow, fast there. in the south. <laughs> As they automatically bring you water as soon as you sit oh, down really? you go anywhere in texas oh. any restaurant in the south here. Here, i have no here, idea you have to ask, to ask for Why, water. Like, no yeah. as soon as you sit down water's yeah. on the table yeah. and whatever if they offer bread or peanuts or yeah. whatever it, like uh texas land and cattle or i mean uh texas roadhouse up here which is funny is the first place my fucking wife took me to is eat it really you're like i've here. been to texas my whole life <laughs> uh I thought it was funny because like we pull into East Greenwich and there's that one right there on yep. the corner and I was like, I got to take a photo of this, yeah. you know, this is hilarious. They uh. even have the Texas flag flying on the separate <laughs> flagpole like you're supposed to. Uh, oh God. Uh, but, um, uh, but yeah, Texas Roadhouse is the only place I've been to up here. Like as soon as you sit down, you have water on the table. Really? I didn't even you know, know did that uh, there. And uh, the peanut, the b bucket of peanuts, you yeah. know, but um, yeah, that's just the thing in the South. Southern hospitality, man. Interesting. Yeah, I never knew that. I, I've been in a lot of states. Texas is like one of the only ones that I haven't been to yet, surprisingly. Yeah, um, you should go. I know, I want to. Um, a matter of fact, when you decide to do a show again, you should go do go one down, down there. Yeah, go. Well, they have, uh, we could, uh, I'll do. Um, matter of fact, all the like pro Kristen, shows are going on there right do, now. Do the um, summer shredding event at Alpha Land. You know, like Kristen Guzman and all that. Like oh, yeah, yeah, show. down in Austin. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've heard that's a pretty good, like, you know, beginner Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any of the ones in Texas, if yeah. you go outside Plus of the big, to visit. I don't if you go if outside of the big six or eight shows that they have, yeah. any of the other ones, the smaller ones, are good shows to start off at. You know. Yeah. Yeah. One of the two guys that I was working with in Florida, he was from uh, Dripping Springs, Texas, I think. I don't not see that. I don't yeah, know I where that is. Town. <laughs> There's a lot so, of small yeah. towns. Yeah. Here I'm from, you have Westerly, Charlestown, yeah. <laughs> Valley. Like, everything here yeah. is small town. Yeah. Just on top of each other. Yep. Uh, I'm from Terrell, Texas, um, which is about an hour east of Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually where Jamie Foxx is from. Oh, really? I actually wa grew up as a young kid going to Terrell, Texas elementary school jamie fox was the quarterback for terrell high no way. and we watched him and his jamie fox is not his real name oh what is um it? uh it's uh oh god you would oh, ask I, me that you'll have to look I, it up yeah um jamie was the name of his father and fox was from red fox eric marlin bishop bishop yeah. eric bishop yeah yeah uh Jeez. he was our quarterback huh. jamie yeah fox. he was our quarterback. so i watched it so that so like the any given sunday movie that he's in yeah I watched that oh crap live, you know, Jeez. when he was playing for Terrell High. Uh, it's weird when you read about people that are from your area that have grown up. Like Conan O'Brien is like near from here, here. And Charlie Day from Always Sunny Philadelphia grew yeah. up in. Um, yeah, and there's uh, a there's a really Bridge. famous uh, a black actress. Um, oh, really? She was on a TV show, um, uh, How to 
How to Get Away with Murder. Oh. Uh, she was the professor on this show called oh. How to Get Away with Murder. It was like uh, college kids that are taking like criminal justice. It's like a law school. And she's from Rhode Island. Wow. Same was like the late, is it the same lady that's on um, Suicide Squad? She plays the yes, commander. She's the, yes. Oh, she, she's oh from Rhode yes. Island. yeah, yeah. She's oh, the. she's from it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I exactly. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's right. What's her name? Uh, Olivia Culpo is from Rhode Island, too. She owns the Back 40. You know, oh, she owns Back 40? Or is you, her family owns You know, oh, speaking wow. of, of uh, actors and actresses in Rhode Island, you know Megan Fox and uh, I can't think of the guy's name. They're in Rhode Island right Machine now currently Kelly. shooting. Is it Machine Gun no, Kelly? No, 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 no. That's who she's dating. Yeah. No, she's in this movie. Oh, Shia uh, LaBeouf. Do you mean Shia LaBeouf from Transformers? Or? I think it may be Shia. They're reshooting Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, no way. Uh, oh, and they're not, shooting it right here in Rhode Island, Island right yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's crazy. When you hear about something from Rhode Island, it's just super small. Like, mm. to hear these famous people, like, come up from here. Like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> think, yeah, uh, yeah. It is cool, name? you know. Yeah. Uh, I think, what's his name? Kevin Bacon. He was up here doing something because yeah. my mom owns an antique store and then. Oh yeah, he there. was uh, he was in Narragansett. He yeah, posted okay. a photo that he was at the yeah. beach oh, in Narragansett. God. That's right. Uh, my my wife saw that and she was like, "Kevin Bacon's in Rhode Island." You know? <laughs> wow. They had a, they had a movie a couple years ago like Moonlight. Um, do you know what I'm talking about, Reed? It was like something Moonlight that was filmed at the Boy Scout camp here. I remember hearing about it. Um, Jeez, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, there are a couple movies around here. Yeah, so, um, something about Mary was filmed up here because yeah. I I remember when I was the first time I drove into Providence and I saw the. The blue cricket or oh whatever. yeah the big, big blue, blue bug, bug. Yeah, yeah yeah i was like hey yeah. that's that's from something about <laughs> yeah. mary you What's know the movie with jim carrey where he plays Dumb and the dumber uh, no no no, no. it's, it's the the state cop something right. about mary's with uh oh my god the state ben cop stiller movie. he plays um, jim carrey plays a rhode island oh state trooper. oh uh i know uh, what me movie. myself, me, myself, and and myself and irene myself and irene yeah that was a good one um yeah they really they dissed the state cops in that oh big time oh my god yeah have you seen that lonnie no. Oh my God. Oh, it's a funny ass yeah, movie. Jim Carrey, Rhode Island. It's hilarious. And it's like stereotypically, <laughs> he lives in this tiny ass house on the water. And like, yeah, it, it was. It was I think Rhode movie. Island state cops have won a lot of like awards for their uniforms. Like yeah. They were like oh, yeah. Ranked. The Mountie uniform. Yep. Yeah. You guys are very well recognized. Yeah. They got the big. Yeah. yeah the big yeah. things that swoop yeah. out on their legs. <laughs> yeah. They look like Canadian mountain yeah. mountains. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, One man. of the Purge movies is also filmed in Rhode Island. Yeah. Really? Right Did it house. really? Yeah. Wow. They just wow. made it the one like that's got like the presidents. Yeah. yeah. They just was, did like the I've only seen the, the first outside. one. I've only seen They're all the yeah. same. Yeah. You're not yeah. listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how much plot could they I Yeah, with that plot, like yeah. how much can you really Was the great uh Gatsby filmed here or something in Newport or what was it? There was um the what, Green what, Book or whatever it was that was I think filmed was in that, Rhode Island. Is that what it was? Okay. Um I don't know that one. I don't know about the Great Gatsby. I think that was filmed at Martha's Vineyard. Oh, it might have been. Okay. That's where Jaws was filmed. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ventured into Newport a lot? Or uh so only last year when I was delivering yep. wood. Oh yeah. Um uh, I delivered over there a few times. Yeah. You know, so uh, if you go around there, there's a lot of cool like mansions and old. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's some there. awesome it's, stuff. It's crazy. I actually delivered to one of those like gated oh, ones really? over there. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. When you hear about people like coming to Rhode Island, it's usually Newport. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they're visiting, it's Newport that they've been to. Yeah. Do you um, guys do you follow that guy Ian? I think his name's Ian Brown. He's an uh, actor. He's local. He does the uh, good fucking morning from uh, uh, New England or whatever no, I don't think so. videos. No, I don't think so. uh, yeah. uh, oh, he's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, oh, but uh, he he he's got a skit that, like a reel that he's got. Yeah. He's like for all you other people that come to Rhode Island, <laughs> there's more to here than Newport. And, yeah. And it's, donkeys. It's yeah. funny that whenever you fly into TF Green, it says it's landing in Providence. But it's yeah, and yeah. everybody Warwick. Warwick. Yeah. Warwick. <laughs> yeah, it's Warwick. Yeah. Oh, my God. That TF Green airport is actually, like, uh, pretty nice. Like, we fly. It, has, places, it is. Yeah, That's where I fly in and out of when I go like, home. Get there, yeah. like, 20 minutes before your yeah. flight. Except for this one clown yeah, yeah. lady so that works I was, there. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I had, I had a one, bad experience. I had one, one bad experience there. Oh, I think... Uh yeah, I was, actually I just dropped my dad off there on Saturday and oh, he's like, My flight's at three fifteen, so we need to get there at one forty five and I was like, yeah, No, you no. don't. Yeah. It's like there's literally it's no one easiest. in that TSA line. Oh, It'd take God. you twenty minutes. <laughs> well, like I went to um Scottsdale, Arizona over the summer and we flew out of we had to fly out of Boston instead of TF Green. Uh, uh, and it's Logan's a nightmare. A yeah. Especially going through the tunnel to Jeez. get there. Uh, it like the when do you drive thirty five minutes to get to the airport? And then all of a sudden you have to drive two hours to get there. You're like, this sucks. And it's a mess. You got to check yeah. your bags. A huge line. Security line. So much longer. TF Green is like the easiest And then he landed in Scottsdale. And I guess it's called the nicest airport in the U.S. It, uh, was, it was just as big, but it's 
yeah. so much easier. Oh, oh Boston yeah. Boston is just a mess. Well, TF Green, they don't fly international, but they only no, they do yeah, fly yeah, well, one you can, flight. You, it's it, to Ireland. Um, oh, do they really? Hundred dollars round trip to Ireland. No but, shit. Yeah. So oh, we, wow. we went there two years ago as a family trip, two or three years ago. Um, hundred dollars each round trip to Ireland. It was like an hour and a half flight. It was the easiest thing ever. My dad goes to Ireland all the time. Oh He's going to be pissed because he yeah. pays an arm and a leg to fly oh, out of DFW. It is so there. like, I mean, you don't get, you can pay more for nicer seats, but it's only an hour and a half. Like, why Wait, would you? Ireland's literally only an hour and a half? By that plane from TF Green. That's a, Really? Yeah. It's that's crazy. closer than Florida. Yeah, it's crazy. There, that's got to be wrong. No, that has no, to be so. You got to fly the over ocean, the goddamn the ocean Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> pull, pull up a U.S. map and look at this. It, no way. Let's see. You can also look it up. Like, are oh, you yeah, on the Concord? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's not from here. That's the wrong one. <laughs> that's what do you mean Norwegian. It's the wrong one. It says Dublin. Nine hours, it says. No, no, nine nine hours. Hours. That sounds about right. That sounds about nine nine right. <laughs> it's, you, it takes longer to fly to Chicago from here because that's it's usually where I connect. <laughs> yeah. It's no, a, no, 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 no. It's not as wrong. I think you fell asleep on Something's the flight. Something's wrong. It's not an hour and a half. That one says 13 hours. I must. I've, I've definitely. It, no way. It's an hour. It's and a half. Not an I fell asleep. Then I don't know what's going on. Pull up a you. I mean a world map and look at the Flights. distance. Yeah. <laughs> Most yeah. maps they shrink it. So look how far that is. I, I got to find this from. Um, Maybe on a Concorde, <laughs> and and you're not getting that for a hundred dollars a flight. <laughs> Round trip. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what that. And the, doesn't it take like a different type of plane to fly over the ocean? Since it's windy or something like that, eighteen yeah, hours. That yeah, one's one of the big. Hours. You got to ride Something's one of the big wrong. bad boys. Yeah. We didn't I, I, think big I think you're over. wrong. We didn't fly eighteen hours to get to Ireland. We definitely didn't fly an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, there's no yeah. way, dude. That sounds about right because my dad flies there from New York. He'll fly from Dallas to New York. Yeah, okay, you got to go up <laughs> I was so and across. Wrong. And uh, I was so wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were you were beyond wrong. <laughs> What the? Definitely must have fallen. You you, you must before. work for CNN. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. <laughs> Jesus, fake news. Why have my parents never corrected me? How old was it from New York? Uh, my dad says it's a 16 hour flight yeah. from New York, and New York is not even like a 20 minute flight. I don't think you could have been any more off. That's like <laughs> that's like a 10 minute so flight <laughs> from New York to Rhode Island's 10 minutes. Yeah. So oh my God. I'm like, starting I'm starting to question the. Uh, that the flight was actually no no hundred dollars. It, it was on that uh, <laughs> it was on that Breeze Airway or something. Oh, you know, like that. There's a it. super cheap uh, airline. What was yeah. the plane? Like then? I flew on Frontier and yeah. never do that again. If we pulled, oh no, I mean I the airplane flying, ride was like really shitty. But I was yeah, flying out. It was, out it was super cheap. Yeah. It was when I was in Florida. I was flying up here, in Orlando, just and keep I cutting in and out. I'm gonna spin them around the other way because yeah. they're pulling on that cord. Oh, huh. there we go. Is that no, better? Could, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. All right, and then um, so I was flying out of Orlando, and I just found the cheapest flight, which is Frontier, and I go into like their wing every. In Orlando, everyone's got their own. Every airline has their own terminal or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And all five planes, they got the noses up. They're working on them. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> what are they and then they get in. It's like sitting in like a plastic chair. Jesus. Yeah. Well, and I'll never do it again. Oh, God. It yeah. was like 60 bucks, and I didn't even have a bag. I just had a backpack. Good Lord. Still, yeah, still but I mean, like, more. that's why, like, down to Charlotte, Carolina, I think it was like 100 and Something to for my parents to go down there around trip for the... Uh, you can catch some good this. deals out of TF oh, Green. Yeah. I flew home for my son's birthday. It was uh, it was 320 for the round trip. Wow. And it was kind of last minute that I booked the flight, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah, easy peasy. Um, yeah, that's... I mean, we've, been, we've been going for an hour and five minutes now. Really? Wow. Yeah. Mm. Um, How long are your shows usually? Uh, that's typically they, like a uh, range like. from a half an hour to an hour and a half. Oh, so the so, hour oh, and a yeah. half one was a very <laughs> that was after we got back from Foxwoods and yeah, like it was like one a.m. Like and like yeah. it was it was a long podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, you've had me talking the whole time. Do you guys yeah. you guys have I haven't questions heard Lonnie or say anything? Yeah, Lonnie, I think he's still half asleep. Yeah, <laughs> he was half asleep over there. <laughs> Did you just smoke a joint? No. <laughs> did you, you did eat, share. Did you even eat your oatmeal? I haven't seen you take. Oh, that's a bite. cold right now. <laughs> eat it cold. <laughs> right after this, I'll eat it. Yeah, I, I've asked Aaron, but I wanted to ask him. You guys got questions for him? Um, no questions for no? Lonnie. I remember the first time that we worked out. 
Lonnie worked out with you though. You went to go throw up in the bathroom. Yeah, well, because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't really, because like normally I would eat something like last you, week. You I ate fried the... chicken before doing doing <laughs> chess, oh my God. and I was, I was, I was still going hard, but I got used to it. So I ate like um. You ate McDonald's. No, I had like a big greasy Italian oh. grinder. Literally thirty minutes before showing we up, we trained legs. And we trained legs. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I didn't expect it to be like that. Was that the day that. that we did the heavy box squats? Yeah. No. Oh. No, wow. the day when we first all worked out. I think we were doing uh, box squats that day. Oh, still. okay, it must have been. Because you was went to go that. throw up, and then there was oh, and that, that weird, weird kid was laying on the floor in the bathroom. In the bathroom. <laughs> so I think wait, throw what? up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 wait! I know the kid with the fucking the uh, the the dog ears, yeah, the, yeah. in the pink uh, shorts. He was, yeah, I went in there, and he's just sitting. Justin, there. I was, oh, I, I didn't like, know his name. I can't throw up. Was this kid just laying? I hope here? he doesn't hear that because we're talking about it. <laughs> he's actually a nice kid. He's just oh, a I'm little sure weird. I've never talked to him because. Every single scenario where I would talk to him, like he like he's closed away. off and quiet. I walked yeah. into the bathroom and like he just like shut the bathroom stall door again. And like <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Um, no, I'm sure he's a really nice kid, but it was just so funny that Lonnie walked out and said I couldn't throw up because the kid was laying on the bathroom floor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, doing some odd stretches too, right? Because people would come in and tell us, there's like, yeah, that kid that has the bunny ears, he's Uh, in there doing stretches in the mirror. Oh, man. Yeah, it's going to be their own. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, the the workouts, because we uh, hit chest last week, two weeks ago or something. Uh Um, Yeah, yeah, you came and jumped in. yeah, Yeah, after a while of not. And that tore my chest up again. <laughs> Jesus. It's different. It's, di- oh, like, it's so, so different. So Matt and uh, Corey from Fuel Good yeah. across the parking lot, they both did a session with me. Yep. And uh, both of them, uh, you know, were like, wow, I thought I worked out hard. Yeah. You know, and it's it's different when someone else is oh, absolutely. there making you do what you would normally stop at, you know, go past yeah. it. Um, add an extra 10 pounds that you normally wouldn't add on there. You know, and plus uh, you work out uh, very much like I said, like that almost like that bro split kind of way to where you're only hitting those once a week typically. So mm-hmm. you can kind of just go all out like yeah. completely. You don't have to worry about walking again until the next like leg day, you know, so like <laughs> it's, um, walking so, normal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so like Matt and Corey work out very differently. They're like 45 minutes like in and out. In typically. And out yeah. So that's like must have been a total yeah. wake-up call and, and like like both of them said uh like they realized that they were taking too much rest yeah you know and uh that like uh, rest like kills you like and she's right. got so much just hidden potential oh my god and yeah. what she can she's capable of doing yeah. um and so does he you know but he still he like he he doesn't want to be a bodybuilder yeah so he's training more but for he's functional a, yeah, purpose he's in like crazy good shape Though, yeah, like, yeah, he's like in he's, great shape, you know. Um, like I did his body fat test. It's been about a month or maybe a little longer than a month yeah. and he was, you know, in the low teens. Yeah, that's You know, uh he's probably lower now, yeah. you know. Um uh yeah. so uh I think the benefit of living, I mean working right across the street from Lux, they just Yeah, they go walk over, right over there. The there's no excuse for them. No. So I had told Carlos when Carlos was getting back into yeah. it, the bar- barbershop's across the parking yeah. lot. There's no <laughs> just fucking walk excuse, right bro. Over. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, they uh yeah, it, it's just it's a totally different style of training. Like right now, I'm doing push pull leg style because I just want to get it twice a weekend, like each thing. Yeah. And uh, you can push yourself pretty hard, but working out like how you work out is like you can do it all the way. Like just push yourself a hundred percent. Like because, like I said, you have a well. Like so, when power. I go into when I go into prep, um, so the last two shows that I did when I uh, I didn't do any cardio. Yep. At all. Oh wow. Um, I trained. <laughs> I lift lifted twice a day. Yeah. But, um, you know, the first training session in the morning, fresh out of the gate, usually fasted in that type of situation, I'm trying to go as heavy as I possibly can. Yep. Um, one, because I'm depleted first thing in the morning and I want to, sh- you know, put as much cellular damage to, to the muscle as I can. Mm-hmm. And then after I've been fed, I go back in the evening and train the same muscle group again. So, oh my God. Um, but lighter weight, <laughs> higher, much higher volume, yeah. much limit, lower rest times. It's more cardio. Yeah. Then it's cardio weightlifting basically, you know, um, just still controlled, not like right. violently. Right, lifting, right, right. <laughs> you're you still know? like, you're not doing the reps like as fast as you possibly can. But, right, right, right. Um, uh, so, um, so, so yeah. So, uh, uh, like when you train in a muscle group multiple times a week, you know, like I went through a period where I was doing legs twice a week. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, and then I went through a period where I was doing my chest twice a week. Cause you know, you get into that situation where you're trying to figure out, you know, what muscle group is lagging right. and when you're training for aesthetics, yeah, when you're training for just strength, you don't really care about that, you know, um, when you're training for aesthetics. So the best way to speed up muscle growth is to increase the frequency that the muscles train, right. you know, which, <clears throat> Excuse me, I know it goes in and negates the whole thing, you know, of uh, overtraining yeah. <laughs> yourself or whatever. And then, I mean, honestly, to, to anyone out there that's ever said that, you're fucking full of shit. There's yeah. no such thing as overtraining. Because um, uh, you can literally train the same muscle group every single day. Yeah. Um, f CrossFit athletes do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, so think you, I think you're you get injured. More, and somebody, say, they're more first, prone to injury. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, well, you, it's because of the style, of the training that you're doing. So that's what I was about yeah, to say. Is their, when, their training so, looks... <laughs> Yeah, so 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 you've got to change the style of or the approach of your training session when yeah. you're going to do that. So like, so you're going to do chest on Monday and you're going to hit it again on Thursday because you do want to give it some recovery time. It's usually 48 hours, right, uh, for optimal mu optimum muscle growth. Because mm -hmm. uh, you're still growing within that that time frame. Like the yeah. synthesis is still going on within those 48 hours. So like, yeah, 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 if yeah. You hit it's, it before then, like, I mean, I'm sure it's good, but like, you haven't really reached your potential yet of like how so, much you're and so when you do that is basically what you do in in that short little time is you do a like you know what you would call like a, a loaded or a load style of session where you're going heavy mm -hmm. low rep you know real hard intensity through the weight yeah. itself and then the second time you go around doing like a deload session so it's lighter weight you know chasing blood flow right you know chasing a pump as, as they would say so um and at that you're, you're still you're still sending the same type of nutrient response satellite cell response hormone response to the area so yeah. it, in, it increases the ability wow. for it to grow like like look at look at my wife's legs in that photo yeah, we were talking crazy. about she trains her legs three days a week Jeez. you know yeah. like she very rarely because her upper body grows as fast as her lower body right. does and for what she what she wants to look she like to on body, stage yeah. She doesn't want a big upper body because yeah. then she's got to go into the bodybuilding category. Right. And she wants to stay kind of in that wellness category. So she doesn't train her upper body as hard, yeah. which is like most people are like, oh, my God, you don't train. But it's <laughs> that's what her goal is. It's you like, know? If it grows that fast, then yeah. Yeah. You know. And it's it, it's geared toward what her goal is right. designed, you know, for. You yeah. Know? I mean, it makes sense. Like if you want to get bigger legs, <clears throat> train your legs, more. train your legs like, frequently. Yeah. A lot of people at the gym that I know <laughs> train their legs a little yeah. bit. more. <laughs> I tell Carlos this morning uh -huh. there was one guy in there and he's skinny skinny legs yep. and he's like making a lot of noise while he was trying to do some squats and I was like I wanted to go over and be like bro take some weight off because you're like you're all <laughs> tendons there's no muscle right here yeah. right now let's build the muscle first God. <laughs> yeah your tendons are squeaking through your mouth <laughs> <laughs> oh man I mean it's it's pretty crazy like when you really devote to growing a certain muscle like how quickly you can actually grow that muscle well this guy's made oh massive God, progress yeah. when you first started coming in when he first brought he was like my yeah. friend Lonnie wants to train and I was like yeah tell him to come on and when he walked in I was like oh man he's gonna struggle yeah. and then he like shocked the shit oh out of me God, how strong yeah. he is and yeah. uh we would tease him and tell him he's got that extra muscle <laughs> uh, uh but uh but then like all of a sudden like I like after like a month and a half of that consistent training I was like yeah. man Lonnie's back is getting big yeah. Lonnie's chest is starting to sh poke through his shirt you know uh uh you know, so, you know, it's, you know, like your body responds to, to things yeah. differently. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, a lot of people don't realize that too. It's like, they don't <coughs> see progress in the first like month of working out when they first start going after it. And that's uh, the biggest mistake people make. And they just, make. they give up. Like, and it's just, the t it, and it's gotten worse over the years, not to knock your generation yeah. down, well, I think but like you just expect. It's social media. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Well, and you just expect immediate re return because yeah, you're used to like video games giving you immediate <laughs> return, you know, uh, social media giving you immediate return, yeah. you know, the, everything's at your fingertips, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like when you actually have to. Yeah. grind it out it's like well why 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 well it's not that's yeah. not fun you know well it's and, like uh, i think once you get into the flow of it um for most people like you kind of learn that it's going to take a long time but that's also like what makes it fun because and very rewarding because someone that's first started working out like it's it's just you have you know i have like five years on someone that's just starting to working out and it takes so long to build up that it feels so much better like right i, I w i'm so happy you can't get that in a year because then like 
you'd go, where did I go from here? You well, know? yeah, like it's, it's like it falls back to that old saying, you know, if it were easy, everyone would do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. There's a reason why it's not easy. Yeah. You know, and uh, but like people that are first getting started into, especially people that are on a massive weight loss, you know, it's like, think about how long you took to get to where you are now. Yeah. It's going to take uh, at least half of that to get to where you want to be. Yeah. You know, so you've treated your body like shit for 10 years to get where you want to be, expect a five-year process. Yep. You know, yeah. yeah, you can make it faster, but then you, you, yeah. you, 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 there's risk with every reward, you know, you yeah. got to, you go, okay, I'm going to take all these enha performance enhancing drugs stacked on top of each other. Yeah. I'm going to make massive progress real quick, but I put, you know, yeah. my organs and, and Everything stuff like else. that at risk, you know, um, not to say that you, you, you may need those, yeah. you know, based off of what your hormone levels are. Right. Um, and hormone, your hormone level is more important like, like you get, like you see all these guys on Instagram and girls on Instagram and say, you oh, oh, know, oh, diet is 80% of the game and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. Okay. It is. But actually diet's a hundred percent of the game. Yeah. You, you can, you don't need to, to, you can get up and go for a th an hour walk and lose weight. Yeah. You don't have to, but if you want to build muscle, then yeah, you got to lift weights. Uh, the diet falls in that. But then even on top of that, you can be like where I was at 35 years old coming switching into being a bodybuilder and training for almost eight months and going, I haven't gained any muscle. Right. I'm killing myself in the gym and I'm not getting anywhere. What's wrong. I'm yeah. eating healthy. I'm eating them on a macro based plan. Right. You know, yeah. I'm not deviating. I'm not drinking. I'm not doing all this stuff. So, uh, an older guy at the gym that was in really good shape was like, you should go get your hormones checked out. Yeah. And I went to the doctor and got blood work done. And sure enough, like, really? you know, my wow. hormones were wrong, Jeez. you know? So, I mean, that's more, and, and I think the healthcare industry should spend more time talking about, instead of prescribing you, you know, antidepressants, right? lifting weights is an antidepressant. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that happen chemically in the brain from lifting weights, you know, but talk to them about their hormone levels. Yeah. You know, and, and are there hormones are, that. are there, and, and that like, so for me at the time I was, you know, I was going through a divorce. I was going all kinds of things. I was depressed. You know, I was all, I was literally lifting weights to keep my mind off of the dark crap that I was thinking about, especially right. going through the divorce at the time. And, uh, uh, the minute that I, that my doctor was like, you know, I went and got my hormones checked and he came back. He's like, you have the testosterone levels at 35 of an 80 year old man. Oh my and I was like, uh, and he was like, yeah, yeah. It was like, we got to get your testosterone levels up. Okay, how do I do that? He's like, okay, you can either get pellets put in your butt. Nope, nope I don't like that idea. Uh, uh, <laughs> he, he was like, you can use this cream. And I was like, and he goes, but there's a side effect, skin cancer. Yep, nope, nope, oh not doing that. Uh, he's like, or you can just take intravenous, yeah. uh, in, uh, or, I mean, uh, intramuscular injections. Yep. And I was like, yeah, I grew up yeah. with taking, having to take allergy shots. I don't, I'm not afraid yeah. to give myself a shot. That sounds like the, the answer that I'd pick. Yeah, yeah. So, so he was like, so he prescribed, you know, testosterone to me. Yep. I went to the, the clinic where they, you know, you get it from because it's not right. sold at a normal no. pharmacy. Yeah. And I uh, sold from a compounding clinic, you know, and uh, they give you everything, you know, the, the, the vial, tell you how to store it, yeah. give you the syringes, you know, and, and once a week I take it either yeah. in my leg or in my butt, you know, yeah. uh, a testosterone shot. And I've been doing that for six years now. Oh, wow. And, uh, that all, but as far as like, like mental health, everything changed. Yeah. You know, as soon as my hormones were correct, it's everything crazy changed. That something that I, w I didn't get pissed off about things like I used yeah. to. You know, uh, I could sleep at night. Yeah. Uh, my my appetite was regulated. Uh, my strength in the gym and recovery from it. You right. know, my motivation, my you know sexual drive, vitality, everything was like where it was supposed to be. Yeah. You know, and then my body started changing. Yeah. You know. Jeez, interesting. That's I never thought about that side of it like that. Uh reasons why you're not growing outside of if you just don't eat right and all that it could be the hormone side of things well think about it <clears throat> your <clears throat> your metabolism everybody talks about your metabolism you know speed your metabolism slow your metabolism blah 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 blah. it's like no it, you, you can't speed your metabolism up you can't slow it down what you can do is you can speed up nutrient delivery or you can slow down digestion and that's based off of what you put in your body 
but your metabolism is actually regulated by a hormone gland, your thyroid. Mm -hmm. You know, there's three hormones that the thyroid produces that determine whether your body is going to process carbohydrates or sugars really fast, mm -hmm. um, which is new, speed up nutrient delivery, or s not process them fast enough, you know, T3, T4, you know, and um, uh, so generally those guys that are like, um, uh, that, that are, they struggle, they shred it all the time, no matter what they eat, you know, they're just lean and yeah. shredded, but they can't gain weight. You know, there's it's they they usually tend to swing towards um, uh, hyperthyroidism, meaning they have really high T3 levels, really low T4 levels. Mm -hmm. um, people that struggle, that you know, your hard gainers, people that struggle losing weight, or they can put on weight just as fast as they can put on muscle, yep. are swinging towards that hypothyroidism, where they have higher T4 levels and lower T3 levels. You know, and it's finding Jeez. the balance between those that makes your body the way it's, yeah. you know do what it, you want it to do. Wow. It's, I, I don't think many people realize how in depth you can go into getting, working out and all that. Oh yeah. Most people just, I think typically just think I just go in, you lift weights and like you eat some food. Yeah. And then but other like, people look at it like, look, they, you know, the meathead. Yeah. You know, the, I, I get, I've been called that, you know, right. I've been called and I'm, and I've always, I'm like, you know what that guy that over there that, you know, you're, you're envious of obviously, cause that's why you're talking crap about him. Yeah. Uh, uh, the meathead that you that's probably the most scientific Guy. single individual that you've ever seen in your life yeah they know all the way down to the very gram of what they're putting in their body why they're putting it in their body when they're putting it in their body that's crazy you know it's and uh having that control being able to do exactly what's your body you want to do when you want to do it and knowing how to do it is like it's like a superpower yeah yeah like, and, and even then it's like even with all the things that you can read about it scientifically, it's still, I mean, it's, it, it, you still learn through trial and error, you know, you still test things. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to try this to see what this does. You right. Know, oh, that didn't work very well. Let's not do that again. <laughs> you know, or I'm going to try this and wow, look at the response from that. Okay. Right. So now I figured out how that works, you know, Jeez. and uh, science, it, it, like even talking about COVID and all that stuff, science is not meant to be trusted. It's meant to be tested. Right. You know, because um, it's constantly evolving, constantly changing. There's certain things that are set in stone: relativity, right. gravity. Yeah. You know, until someone comes <laughs> I don't up think with no something one's going to out there to, to test gravity. Is this real? Well, I mean, until somebody comes up yeah. with a way to disprove it, it you know, does, it sounds crazy. Until someone does something like that, and you're like, oh wow, like that guy's not crazy anymore. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, well, it was the electricity sounded crazy yeah. until he went out and flew the kite and found out yeah. about it, you know, and the apple, Sir Isaac Newton, all that from the yeah. tree, it sounded crazy before. Yeah. Um, until yeah. they could, until they tested to it prove and it. proved it. Yeah. And then no one's been able to disprove yeah. it. So then it becomes, <laughs> that's when it becomes scientific fact. But right. until then it's supposed to be tested. Yeah. It's supposed to be questioned, you right. know, and uh, that, cause that's how, that's, that's how it evolves. You know, and your body evolves the same way. Everything's a massive science project. Yeah, it's it's cool learning over time like that. Um, damn. Uh, you guys have any other questions for Aaron? I don't want to keep him too long. <laughs> I don't care. I got nothing to do today. <laughs> Cowboys played on Thursday, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which was a mind fuck in itself. Yeah, you guys. A lot of it. flags in that game. Oh, my God. Flag Fest 2021. Yeah. God. I think there was 14 penalties for the Cowboys and 11 penalties for the Raiders. <laughs> yeah. And I'm surprised on that one when Tony Pollard ran the kickoff back for the touchdown and the ref tripped on the pylon. Yeah. They didn't throw a flag on that. <laughs> I, I, when I first saw it, I thought he like ran into a coach or something. Like, oh, yeah. oh, God. Sniper shot his ass. Yeah. <laughs> he was getting ready to throw the flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think we'll probably wrap this one up here. Yeah, then. sure. Yeah. Um, it was fun, dude. Yeah. Uh, do you want to... Tell them your Instagram and all that. Or oh yeah, so um, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, the handle is at two twelve degrees coach. Uh, so it's the number one two one, and then the words degrees coach, all one word. Yeah. That's where you can find me at. Um, if you're local to the area, come see me at Lux Fitness. Yeah. Uh, in Westerly, off of what what street is that off of? I think Granite. Yeah, street. Is it Granite Street? street? Yeah, yeah Granite so. Street, right yeah. by the Westerly High School. Yeah. I know that. Um, and then, um, you can, f you know, find me on Facebook, Aaron Garrett, A-R-O-N-G-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. Uh, I don't always accept friend requests on there <laughs> as much as I 
dude. <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> Isn't, yeah, well, you get weirdos on... Yeah. You tend to get more weirdos on Facebook than you yeah. do on Instagram. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you, know. you do. You uh, get a lot of Middle Eastern people on Instagram. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not that true. there's a problem with that. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> Not it, an Islamophobe. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title of the episode. Aaron's an Islamophobe. <laughs> Aaron's no, no, not no, an Islamophobe. Yeah. <laughs> I got a... It's like my Instagram. I have like six requests and they're all just like... Oh, yeah. Yeah. For yeah, yeah. Arabic writing. Weird, weird profiles. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, thank you very much for joining us today, Absolutely. Aaron. Anytime, appreciate it man. a lot. Um, ton of fun. And uh, thanks, guys. And follow us on Road to Greatness on... Uh, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, and uh, yeah, have a good one.